The Red Raiders 2023 and 2024 season has officially come to an end, but the transfer portal is just heating up. In today's video, we'll mention two players that the Red Raiders have already contacted in the transfer portal and other names to monitor. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here from the Back to 12 podcast. And if you want to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, do these three simple steps for me. Like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube. There's no other channel that has more subscribers or that is more interactive than the Back to 12 podcast channel in Red Raider Nation. So if you want to be a part of that, do those three simple steps for me. Like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. And if you want to join the fastest growing group of Texas Tech fans on the internet, head on over to the Scarlet and Black Insider.com where your first month is a dollar and you can stay in the know on everything Texas Tech men's basketball in the transfer portal at the blink of an eye. It's myself, Austin Massey, and Jacob Harris keeping you in the know for Texas Tech men's basketball in terms of the latest names that they've contacted in the portal, some names that are heating up for them in the portal, and the Texas Tech men's basketball roster heading in to next season. So if you want to join, well, the most engaging and fastest growing group of Texas Tech fans on the internet, head on over to scarletandblackinsider.com where your first month will be a dollar. All right, let's talk about well one of the early names that really stands out that Texas Tech has already contacted in the transfer portal. It is J.P. Bugis, and if you recognize the name, there might be a reason for that. I'll mention it here in just a second. He's 6'1", one, one year of eligibility. He went to Furman last year and averaged just under 18 and a half points per game, just under four and a half rebounds per game, and almost had five assists per game. His official stat line was 18.4 points per game, 4.3 rebounds, and 4.8 assists per game. He is an elite shooter, a passer, and really, really good in the pick and roll as the primary ball handler, and he can be off the ball as well for catch and shoot opportunities. His usage rate was crazy last year at Furman in terms of how good he was in terms of efficiency with that usage rate. He shot nearly 37% from three and averaged just two turnovers per game, actually just under it, 1.8. But he was asked to create a lot for Furman last year, whether that was in the pick and roll, off ball screens, whatever it may have been. He was a guy that was the go-to guy for Furman last season. He ranked top 70 in the country in both scoring and assists. And the reason you may remember him, and Texas Tech fans will like him already just because of this next comment, you may remember him because of his game winner in the NCAA tournament. No, not this year, but in 2023 where Furman beat Virginia on a last second shot. He was the guy that made that deep three-pointer to push Furman into the second round of the NCAA tournament. Now, as for me, JP is a guy who would make the Red Raiders, in my opinion, have arguably one of the best trio of guards in the country, okay? You add JP to the likes of Chance McMillan, Pop Isaacs, and then you add JP in there. That is a trio of guards, albeit on the smaller side, are absolute buckets and would create just matchup nightmares for every team the Red Raiders would play. Now, let's be honest about it. It's very early on. He's going to have a ton of schools reach out to him, but it is good to see that the Red Raiders are one of them. And what's also good to see is this crazy, and I mean crazy deal, from MyBookie. Head on over to MyBookie.com right now and use the code BACK TO 12 TO SECURE YOUR LIMITED TIME WELCOME BONUS TODAY ON YOUR FIRST DEPOSIT OF UP TO $1,000. THEY HAVE EVERY ODD YOU COULD WANT FOR MARCH MADNESS RIGHT NOW. AND YES, I KNOW THE RED RAIDERS AREN'T INVOLVED ANYMORE, BUT THAT DOESN'T MEAN YOU CAN'T BE INVOLVED IN ALL OF THE BETTING FUN WHEN IT COMES TO THE GREATEST TOURNAMENT ON EARTH, AT LEAST IN MY OPINION. HEAD ON OVER TO MYBOOKIE.COM AND USE THE PROMO CODE BACK TO 12 TO SECURE YOUR LIMITED TIME WELCOME BONUS TODAY ON YOUR FIRST DEPOSIT of up to a thousand dollars they have the latest odds you can get in there and do player props there's so much more enjoy the thrill of march madness over on mybookie.com and when you use the code back to 12 you can secure their welcome bonus today on your first deposit of up to a thousand dollars all right let's talk about the other name that is kind of a standout in terms of where texas tech has gone into the portal and a guy that I think could just really be a plug-and-play guy for the Red Raiders. 
It's actually JP's teammate. We go back to Furman. Marcus Foster, he is 6'4". He's a guard, one year of eligibility. He is a super senior. Tech reached out to him basically as soon as he was in the portal. He is a really interesting guy from this standpoint. Averaged 17 points per game. But remember, he's 6'4", and he averaged seven and a half rebounds per game, almost two assists. Oh, and add on a steal as well. He plays bigger than his size. Is he the most athletic guy you're ever going to see? No, not really, but he's 6'4", has closer to a 6'7", 6'8", wingspan, and creates a lot of length and havoc and has really good footwork as well at the guard position. He has a lot of similarities, in my opinion, to a Kerwin Walton. He's not shooting the ball as high of a rate as Kerwin Walton, but it's pretty damn good, and we'll talk about it here in just a second. I do think he's a better primary ball handler than Kerwin Walton from the film that I've seen, and also he's a guy that excels in the pick and roll, whether that's as an actual screener for Furman or as the primary ball handler. Now, again, I'm going to mention this stat from three doesn't look too great right now, but we'll, we'll get to it here in just a second. In the sense of he shot less than 30% from three. He has a similar build to Kerwin Walton, obviously not similar numbers from three, but the year prior, he shot 36%. Now, when you look at why was there a drastic dip in his three-point percentage from 2023 to 2024, it was his usage rate. I mean, Furman gave him and JP the ball a ton. Those were the two guys that really made Furman go offensively. And if it wasn't those two guys, well, good luck, basically. But Foster had a usage rate of 27.2. For reference, Pop Isaacs was 28.5, okay? That's the reason there was such a dip in his shooting percentages. He was asked to do a lot more and probably out of the realm of what he's comfortable doing at Texas Tech. I think he would be more of an off-ball guy that could help you be a primary ball handler in the pick-and-roll type game, but he's going to be much better in the catch-and-shoot opportunity and really create problems with his link on the defensive end. He's a guy that I think, again, would just thrive running around like Kerwin Walton, catch-and-shoot opportunities in the corner or wherever his spot is and really just make things easier for the primary ball handler for Texas Tech in a pick and roll situation or just knowing, hey, there's a guy over there that can shoot lights out off of a catch and shoot. So he's that kind of guy, in my opinion. And again, just like I said for JP earlier, um, JP Pazix, um, it's still very early on in the transfer portal process right now. Texas Tech is going to reach out to a ton of guys, but I did think it was interesting that as soon as these two got into the portal, Texas Tech's name was damn near instantly connected to him. So that's something to know right there. Those are the two guys early on. There's others as well. You can get the full rundown in terms of the early targets over on Scarlet and Black Insider.com, where your first month is just a dollar to join. Well, the fastest growing and most engaging Texas Tech site on the internet. And then, hey, if you want to join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube, it's very simple. Do these three simple steps for me. Like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. Stay in the know on all things Texas Tech men's basketball, even in the portal, all year long, right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.